I am joined by Bishop Maponga, who's in studio with me in Johannesburg, and uh, Bishop Noel Jones, who's all the way in Los Angeles. Today, the white master is off the hook for at least 30% of our conversation. We are putting ourselves on the cross. It's our turn now. We cannot keep blaming missionaries. We cannot keep blaming colonization because it's a result of. We have perpetuated 25 years of democracy. How many billionaires did the ANC government produce? Two. One of them is the current president. The other one is the brother to the president. How sustainable is that? <laughs> In 25 years of democracy, two black billionaires, President Ramaphosa and his swar. For me, the correct billionaires are the Tibotach kind of billionaires, mm -hmm. where you are prepared to get to the necessary. Show me one industry that we have built as a government for 25 years. Show me one institution of learning. Show me one curriculum where we've deconstructed the colonial curriculum into the modern curriculum so that we can begin to say we understand the African child and this is what he needs. He does not need to get a profession so that he goes to look for a job. He needs to get a profession so that he can begin to create solutions for the community. I love it. I like this before I bring Bishop Noel Jones. It further goes and says if an African or a wealthy African dies, he will be buried in his native country in Africa. Yet a portion of his wealth will have been spent abroad. So, in a nutshell, the continent is a graveyard. Let me welcome Bishop Noel Jones all the way in LA. Good, good afternoon to you, Bishop. Uh, it's marvelous again to be with you, and uh, I know it's evening time, your time. I think you're picking up a really uh, significant subject today because uh, as you opened and you said that it's on us now. And for the longest, I think that many times we should focus on us. I. I, I wonder if uh, Martin Luther King were alive today, if he would feel as if integration was the best thing for the African American. And uh, in the same sense that Africans and African Americans, because of their position socially and because the dominating culture, the dominant culture, had to find a way to completely obliterate any kind of self-esteem that we would have and completely annihilate our ability to reach and love one another, it is critical to divide and conquer. And one of the things that have gone wrong is that we have allowed ourselves, even after being released, not to put a get again together a document. Uh, I want to ask this question, I have to ask you because I've been studying documents and I'm saying that every time a group of people have been oppressed and released, they put together a document. Go all the way back to, uh, first of all, let's go to the Bible. And even before the Bible, you have to deal with the Hammurabi code. And many people said that uh, Moses took many things from Hammurabi. The issue surrounding being oppressed and being released is that anytime you have a group of oppressed people that are released, the first thing that happens is, and it happened in the Bible, the first thing when they come out of Egypt is you have a Ten Commandment. You have a Ten Commandment, and the Ten Commandments are 60% social and 40% spiritual. Now, much of that is born out of what you suffered before and how you were treated before. If you look at the ancillary commandments and the ancillary uh, additives to the Ten Commandments, you will find in numbers, that's why I notice now, you have numbers, you have a lot of commandments, then you have Deuteronomy, which is the second law. Why is it so? Numbers and that first commandment is for the group of people who came out of Egypt initially, but only two of them made it in of the original number. So you had to have a second law 
And that second law is for the people who were born in the wilderness. Anytime you come out of oppression and take it from the Ten Commandments, Magna Carta, which is what was the basis or substratum for the Constitution in America. Anytime you come out of something oppressive, you generally put a document together to tell you how to go forward. It's born out of your pain, but it's born out of going forward. We will not act like our oppressors. So now the question is, what document did black folk put together in America and what document did you all put together in South Africa to govern how black folk would operate with each other? And if we haven't done a document yet, I think we ought to sit down and put together a document based on oppression and based on where we want to go in the future together. I want to, first of all, um, acknowledge what Bishop Noel Jones said last night. I was listening, and I don't think he knows. He was talking to Reverend Al Shopton, um, Rich, uh, Bishop Richard, and I uh, think uh, uh, Pastor Caesar. Um, but one of the things Bishop mentioned that we took off on a wrong tangent after apartheid. His point was we should have identified the right candidates to occupy office rather than having former Robben Island prisoners occupying the official space in public service. And reason for that, it has set us back. The right way to compensate or to give some kind of um, recompense of reward for those who serve time at Robben Island should have never been assuming the ministry into cabinet. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we went further back than we should have propelled in the space of democracy. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that because had we established that ideology then, mm -hmm. the right people who spent years studying in Oxford in diaspora while we were under Prison. apartheid, mm -hmm. they would have put this document that best help us navigate into today. We find ourselves today without the right archive or the Freedom Charter, if I may make reference of it. Mm -hmm. Who contributed? You want, you want a good answer. To the Freedom Charter. Let's cut it quickly. Yes, yes. Please. I'd the like Freedom to hear Charter. the response. Yeah, the Freedom Charter on one side. Yes. The Constitution on the other side. Correct. You cannot tell me that on the evening of independence. Yes. You wake up the following morning and you have a government and a constitution. Let's agree. Let's okay. not waste each other's time. Okay. This is a cut and paste. So walking around the whole world, shopping around for some few paragraphs from Australia, few paragraphs from Italy, few paragraphs from Europe, and etc., and come up with an acceptable constitution within the greater community. Unfortunately, when you are doing that, you never went to the old woman in Mtuba Mtuba. You never went to, 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 to Haman Skrull, to some old men sitting under a tree, to find out, will this high-level, intellectual, international, acceptable mm. constitution and freedom charter, will it address me, you, in your present condition? Mm. Then we find out on the evening of... and t let's, Let me use a very, very loose language. Yes. This guy's been in prison for 27 years. Yes. They are tired of fighting. <laughs> and by the time you're giving them the ropes now to run the machinery of government, there was no time, frankly speaking. We woke up one morning and we had a constitution, but I don't think for the life of me, I was here from 1992, 93. Yes. For the life of me that I remember a referendum running around the country to proofread the constitution prior to it being mandated as holding South Africa ransom to date. Mm. So if a few intellectuals apparently met where they were meeting, and had a conversation at high level and got these documents quickly cut and pasted to check out grammatical issues. Is it the reason why our judiciary is still under the Roman Dutch Correct. Law? It's on the evening of that night. Because when you adopt that constitution, then you're binding the whole country to a certain pathway. And that pathway, for me to be, say it even more, more raw language, the, the, the parties that have the resources yeah. to put the document together yeah. are not the same parties that were in Robben Island. Mm. Let's agree. You're mm. dealing with how many prisoners who are coming out of prison? And now you want to give them the government. They must get documents signed. They must get everything prepared on the evening of the independence. And you think that amongst themselves, they will have had enough money to pump into this thing. So tell me, who had an interest 
in a progressive constitution in South Africa that was all inclusive, that was neither this nor that, please occupy that and that. Who could have an interest except those that were sponsoring the bill? So I want to ask, Bishop, when I sat with the great Harry Belafonte, um, it was the year ANC celebrated its 104th birthday. And uh, we were in New York at that time to ask him if he got invited to the biggest celebration. And he said he won't attend this celebration because he got the invite from Bill Clinton when he raised millions of rands for the ANC. And at that time, he dealt directly with Nelson Mandela's office. He said it was a shame that he's getting invited by the former president of the United States when he directly dealt with the ANC during the time of apartheid to raise funds to fight apartheid. So they felt that to be invited at that time by Bill Clinton's office, it was an insult for them. And I want to ask you, you have supported South Africa. You speak on behalf of this country as an ambassador. Is there a great deal of disappointments from our fellow brothers and sisters who carried the cross along with us? And when we got to the point of, uh, of, of being appointed into power, we didn't live up to the struggle that enabled us to be here in the first place. The disconnect is, is, is fermented. The disconnect is nourished by the dominant culture. So at the end of the day, when South Africa, after its struggle, and no matter who struggled from the diaspora along with you, at the end of the day, what Africans and African-Americans and West Indians, each group wants to prove that they are more advanced, separate from, and don't need the other's help which is the biggest fallacy in the world. Anytime you have a government that is associated with America, notice how quickly Trump was going to jump in the situation where you're giving your land back to the African people and he is, is threatening, I don't know what in the world he's threatening to do, but he's threatening something uh, that is a figment of his own imagination, his own mind probably. I don't know that we can even put it with reality, but the whole point is see how quickly he moves to threaten. Why? Because there is a club, an exclusive club around the world that white people have. Yeah. And each one is looking out for the other's interests right. all over the world. You can take it all the way to Europe and look at the way they can bring their nations together because that's the, the common European market and they, they look out for each other. Here is our problem. Okay. We don't understand, first of all, the power that we have because we have not been in touch with the strength of who we are. African Americans, their GMD, their GNP, is their gross national product is, would make us number five or six yes, in sir. the world. Yes, sir. If we separated ourselves, but we are looking so much in climbing into a wide arena that we fail to understand the arena we're already in is powerful enough to change the dynamics. Sick black people shut down a $12 trillion economy. Mm. Black sick. Don't get me worked up now, Bishop. Don't get me worked up yes, now, sir. Bishop. Because for the longest yeah, time... Help me, help me, Bishop. For the longest time, I've, I've shouted, and many of my pastoring friends here in the South think I've lost my marbles. But I'm just saying, if you can just focus for Sunday collections yeah. from uh, yeah. Peter, from Petersburg yes. to Cape Town, yes. Durban into Uppington. Okay. Just the Christian community. Yes, sir. The collections we do on a Sunday. Right. Could we just put that in a one kitty? Since we are all Christians and believe in Jesus. Okay. So we have the same software. Uh -huh. So can you, can, can you just put our money in the same pocket and see what amount of muscle the church could have financially. Mm. And I think the bishop is quite quite frank in this, and he mentioned the other day, the schizophrenic behavior yes. of the church, yes. where we think, and the, Af the African in total, where we think that God and being successful and making money can never mix right. somewhere. Okay. 
somehow God and money are not friends. Right. But it is the only thing we'll be collecting in churches every Sunday. Mm. Had we just put this money yeah. in a local yeah. kitty. Okay. How many factories could we have bought? Yes, sir. How, how many industries could we have established? How many hospitals could we have built? How many schools, even the very schools of training these very same ministers? Okay. Bishop, allow me. The richest man in the continent, the richest man, Dangot. over Dangoti, mm. Nigerian brother. Mm. Now, yeah. we got to talk about this. Dangoti is said to be worth 18 US, 18 billion dollars mm. US, okay? Mm. Something along those lines. The second richest man is another African. The third richest man is another African. I'm talking about these are Nigerian brothers. Mm. Um, we'll come to South Africa because we feature around the number eighth. <laughs> re, re, well, well, well yes, that, yeah, the, the Angola, lady, the Angola hear lady comes in. Hear me out. Mm. But all these numbers are verified by Forbes. Who's Forbes? That's where the money is. If the wealthiest, if I'm Dangoti, maybe I can start changing the thermometer that determines how hot my billions are. Mm. Because the last time I checked, he's been hot for the past seven years. He's the wealthiest man mm. in the continent. Now, it seems to me, back to what this notion by allegedly President Putin, mm. shouldn't Africans get to a point where they actually put regulating measures that they founded. It seems to me that we are trying to be number one in a regulating body called Forbes that we don't even know. I was the president of Africa Union. Okay. I would wake up in the morning. Right. Get all the lawyers in Africa. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. In one basket. Yes. And we go and sue the Zurich Bank. We S go sue them. The Swiss Bank. Swiss Bank. Every dollar that is found in these banks under the presidential names of African leaders, mm. you must know that there's a corrupt relationship in those bank accounts and redeem that finances back to the people where it was confiscated from. Because there's no way you can be making money in Africa and it's being spent somewhere else. The, the, I drew a picture the other day, a fine picture that I did, mm. where a cow is eating grass in Africa and the milk is being milked in the West. Mm. So Africa becomes a grazing ground, but the juice and the curds of the milk Mm. The African will never get to taste that. Mm. We're just a grazing field. Mm. And Bishop, your thoughts on that? Once the dominant culture makes the move, and uh, once they get to that place where they are in charge, they literally, and over, and, and we're talking generations of it, because I remember years ago, you and I, uh, you, you, were, you were reading a book that talked about generational wealth. And the history of money. And the history of money automatically blocks people who have to be used to sustain that wealth. Because you have to have people to serve. You have to have people on the lower end of everything. Yes. The difficulty here is, and I think our leadership, particularly in South Africa, the reason why I was crying so hard about uh, putting people who came out of uh, Robben Island and, and making them official leaders. One is, for years they were locked up. And even though they were in touch with the struggle, the basic struggle, they were not in tune with the nuances of the education that comes right. with understanding what is happening. Here, here, here's what I'm saying. Uh, President Obama uh, thought and thinks in many instances as white as anybody. Anytime you have a black man that is the law review, he, the, the, the magazine in the law review of Harvard, and he's the editor. He has now tapped into the way they think. Now, obviously, we're in a society that they're in control of. But what we should do is they use our backs to get to where they are around the world. My point is, why didn't we take their education right. and use it to enrich ourselves in their countries that we built ah, because what? we don't have the right attitude. We built the country. It is more ours than theirs. First of all, the land was ours. We swapped the Bible and the Koran for the land and, uh, and, and then they built it on our backs and then we should take the education they give and we should turn it and build ourselves as a nation. Wow. So, so Then they have to come to us with respect. One thing that we're doing right is we are raising the dialogue. Mm. 
This dialogue inspires the narrative. Mm. And that's the sole purpose of this show. The new normal, this dialogue is to be able to spark mm. the thought. The thought part, yeah. But I'd like to raise something to both Bishop Jones and Bishop Maponga. We all yearn mm. for this financial freedom. But the truth of the matter is those who have it probably receive it, received it at the expense mm. of selling their own. Yeah. Now, there's a proverb that says, if you steal a drum, you cannot play it. Yeah. Because they will hear it. They will hear Maybe it. Let, let's put let's put corruption huh? into context. Correct. By education. Yes. By training. Yes. Uh, in our entire academic in, uh, journey. Yes, sir. Is creating a utopia for us. It's creating a world that you want to live in. Mm -hmm. I, I did William Shakespeare. Mm. I did Twelfth Night, in, far from the maddening crowd. Mm. You know. Yeah. So, I did Charles Dickens. If me. Hey. I, I can recite Mr. Chukam Child. Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist. Yes. yes. And, you, and you go through all this poetry of Oliver Twists and everything else. Yes. Creating for you a, a, a British, a British, uh, you know, settlement. Yes, sir. As a, as, 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 as a dream. Let me, let me be frank. As a Zimbabwean boy growing up heading cattle. Mm. And then you go and you pick up this book and your grandfather and grandmama are saying, young boy, if you learn and you study hard, you can end up there. This is where you're going. You are even told you must study so that you don't have to look after cattle. Mm. You, you must study so that you don't live in mud houses. You must study. So it, it becomes a migration pattern. Just during the times of your study, you're actually looking for an escape button. You are like a pilot. Immediately there's a button to press, you go boom. Now the problem of corruption is that when the African leaders steal the money from African resources, yes, sir. they cannot put a palace in Alexander mm. with stolen money. Okay. You cannot enjoy your money. I love that. People will be talking too much around you. So what is the mo yes. what is the most ideal thing to do when you steal money from Africa? Put it in offshore accounts so that you can go there on holidays with your wife and you sit at the beaches in Mauritius and no one knows you there. Okay. You're in dark shares and a small little white stupid white hat. If the statement is Putin wrong. said is not the reality of our African political terrain. Yes, and sir. the answer is a big fat yes. My own president across Zimbabwe right here, right here. Munangwanga. My own president, my vice president right here. My own ex-president, the late one, right here. Yes, sir. When they were sick, where did they go? Singapore. When the coffin finally came back, hey. where was it going? Hey, hey. I mean, I, I don't have, I'm, I'm using my own president. Okay. So that it, it, it hits home. Okay. And, so, and, I, and I can speak with caution also. Yes, sir. Mugabe came back. With a casket. With a casket. Yes. But it's fully known that his investments and everything else are in Singapore. I in Thailand and in many other places of the world. The body came back, but the wealth that he took to offshores never came. For crying out loud, he could have kept the body there. Just bring back the money. <laughs> 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 and, and, that, and, and the main truth is, why do we educate our kids and work hard for their education if it's not to use it within the frameworks of the community that we have? I think to a great extent, and even American, from, from, from African-American preachers all the way across the board, leaders in general, that again, we have to go back to what is your intention? Because your intent controls content as you speak to other people, and it also controls the way you live your life. I should never be competing against another African-American, another black person, another African. I should never compete against somebody my own color. What I should do is use the advancement that I have received, fortunately by the grace of God, and infect that spirit into the brothers and sisters that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I walked into Neiman Marcus some years ago and I looked up at Neiman Marcus and I said, who would appreciate a gift from Neiman Marcus more? A woman who has worked hard, made her life work, and I bought her something out of Neiman Marcus, Louboutin, Charles Jadon, I bought her something. Would she appreciate it more, or would it be appreciated more by a woman who has never worked a day in her life? Who would appreciate the gift? Oh, come on. Mm. The one who knows the cost of working for it. You see, the person who understands what goes into getting it, this is why so many of our boys in, in, in pro sports, they get buku money. 
And five years after they leave the league, I loan money to somebody who made $200 million. Why? Because what it takes to get it is what it takes to keep it. And that's where we need to educate our people to the point where they understand that you don't take your money and put it overseas somewhere while you have 40% unemployment in your own neighborhood. You once said, Bishop, you cannot attract what you can't mm. keep. I remember that. You can't keep who you, you can't attract. You can't attract. keep who you can't attract. Whatever it is that we've acquired as black people, did we have the right principle, the right uh, mental disposition in what it is that we have attracted or the reason we're struggling with keeping certain things in place, keeping legacies or keeping businesses for over 10 to 20 to 50 hundred years. Is it because the founding principle of anything we've acquired in the business space, in the church space, political space is, is based on principles that are not of our own? Are we afraid of success? Are we afraid of ownership? Are we, do we have this phobia of being, uh, not being able to be strong and see ourselves as owners, rightful owners of anything that is under our kingdom? Can you allow me to go to the Bible and if I, I may just usurp uh, uh, my bishop's Please. place for a minute? Please. I want to go to the Bible on this one. Uh, and uh, Jesus is walking up to a man that's laying by a pool. And the man's been at the, the pool. He was sick for 38 years. Exegetically, you can't say that he was at the pool for 38 years because it doesn't say that from a technical point of view. But we do know that multiple years he's tried to get to the water. He couldn't get to the water. Now, yes. Jesus walks up to him and Jesus asks him, will thou be made whole? The answer is, is, is simple. Why are you asking a man who has been trying to get to the water, why are you asking a man who is by the pool anyway? Yes. Why would he, how, how, how do you want to be made whole? Uh, well, you cannot be around lame people, halt blind. You cannot be around people with no ambition you can't be around people who are restricted psychologically, restricted physically, with all kinds of sicknesses, and you cannot be around them and not be comfortable in that space. Wilt thou be made whole is a question we need to ask each other. Why? Because the water's already troubled. We're already in a place where we can achieve and gain with each other. But the question is, are we so psychologically debilitated that he has to stimulate our faith to the point where we wake up and realize that it is right in the middle of our hand? So what we've got to do is understand quickly that my greatest strength is my brother. And we cannot allow hey. ourselves to be divided anymore. When I kill one of my brothers, I, it's not murder, it's suicide. Woo! Because I'm killing my own. I want to add, I want I'm killing add, myself. I want to add something very, very, very intentional yeah. to the African community pertaining to how do we lift each other up. Mm. Uh, maybe we can even take this as an incubator program Go ahead. for ourselves. Yes. Those who have acquired education yes. to a certain level, be it marketing, be it business, be yes. it accounting, whatever it is. Right. One of the best ways of lifting up the continent is those who have skills to do a pyramid scheme, not of money, yes, but of knowledge, where you can take your skill and just try and influence the person lower than you, but closer to you. Okay. So that one brother begins to lift up another brother. All right. You know your you know marketing. Yes, sir. So yes, if you can sir. find five or six small businesses around the town here, mm. go and study them nicely. They really they have a good product. They may have an, a bit of squeak here and there. And through your skills, you can say the quality is wrong. The quality is wrong. Instead of cutting down each other, take your skills and assist a brother to produce the product that is acceptable. Correct. Incubate the brother and lift him up. And by so doing, we're actually doing an ilima is zunde. They call it zunde, social corporate investments. Right. And there's no way you can be poor, Tibos, after you have raised all the big top guys who have made money out of entertainment, they were able to identify talent. 
And until Africans begin to harvest African talent and invest skills in it, the quality of service I, remains I, poor. I, I, I got a question to throw. And uh, I, what I appreciate about your boys at the church, Bishop, I pull up, yeah. and I'm not proud of it, you know, I pull up slightly late when I'm in L.A., uh, just before you get on stage and security opens up for me and then, you know, I, I manage to smuggle my way and they just know when they see me, take touch to the front. I mean, that's, I don't ask for it, they just do it. I had a problem two days ago. I drive through my own estate. This is my house. Securities that I give food on a daily basis. I drive through my gate. They just introduced a system where every resident's got to have a card. Now, I didn't go to sign up for the card because, you know, I'm busy running all over town. I get through to the gate and say, hey, open up. They're like, oh, we have a new card system. You didn't get your card? I said, hold on a second. What card system? I'm driving through. This is, I own this house. I'm probably one of the first black to buy. I bought it in 2009. It's a new estate today. It's over 11 years old. The very same guys that knows, they say, we have to call Julia. Julia is the head of the body corporate. I looked at the guys after they opened up. I said, did you understand? What just happened? What just happened? You just went yes. and yes. called London mm. to give permission to me, to me in to front of you. House. And you didn't apply common sense to let me in a property that I have title deed. And Julia didn't have to be the one to say no to me. But Julia's influence and the legacy of that apartheid just materialized in how you treated me. Mm. Mm. I, I took offense to it, and I'm sorry that I blew out of proportion. Mm. I felt I should probably open some kind of a legal pursuit because it's 11 p.m. <laughs> what if I'm being chased by somebody who I'm running and away from, and I'm trying to get into my house? Mm. And you took 20 minutes because you needed a Julia to let you in. There's a famous, there's a famous Zulu story. Yes. Without being derogative, of okay. course. Okay. But they said this guy was told that when someone comes and they're buying uh, paraffin, yes, you put it first in this five liter here. Okay. Then you pour it into their five liter. And by paradventure, someone comes from his house carrying a five liter. Okay. He says, please, can you put paraffin for me here? The man says, no, no. no. According to the rules and regulation. Mm. I must put it here first. Mm. If <laughs> I can pour it. And I can put it in the... The man says, no, but it's all five liters. Yes. It makes no differences. No, the regulations. Yeah. And I, I'm emphasizing that we have this the West colonial system. I'm sorry to say this. is the white man who is in our minds. The notion of what will he think Yes. If I talk like that. Okay. What will he think if I dress like that? Okay. What will he think if Africa How do we erase like that? that? How do we how do we cleanse? How do we detox that space? Because well, you don't well, have first of all I, yes, I think I think you detox it by having this conversation. And I think the conversation has to be frank, as you said earlier, and I concur. People ask me all the time, why am I so community oriented? Why do I spend so much time dealing with educating other people, other people's children, and making sure that the community That's is strong right. around me? Why do I do it? I said, well, in some cases, it's a little bit selfish. And they said, well, what are you talking about selfish? It's selfish because if I have a bunch of educated kids and everybody around them is ignorant, who will they marry? Come on, Richard. Who hey, will they hang out come with? On, Richard. My responsibility is to reach as many people around me as possible. And it begins in the family. Families have got to build up the nature, the psychological disposition of the children who are in their care. What we have got to understand is our future is in our children. No. Our future and the future of our world is in our children. So you look at that child, you study that child, and when you find the proclivity and the tendency that that child has to any particular thing, you feed it. You Hallelujah. feed it. You expose that child to everything you can until you find what that child's strength Richard is. Jones. And when we have communities with strength, yes, sir. Families with strength, and we understand that our strength is with each other. I ought to walk into Soweto and folk that have money that came out of Soweto shouldn't be trying to go to Stanton. They ought to build a place in Soweto so that when the poor kids in Soweto come out of their houses and look over there and see that. All right, so you want a place in Stanton, fine, but have one in 
Soweto too, so that the kids can come out and see. Man, no. this is magnificent, and it's right around the corner. I can do it. We have to be examples to each other. We have to live for each other, and we have to understand the white man ain't going to do it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, hey, can I share a testimony? Yeah. Can I share a testimony, yeah, Bishop? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 bought, I, bought a, I bought a house in, in a section called Protea North and in Pimville. This is in Soweto. I didn't have an idea, but the, the interesting fact about the one in Protea North, mm. I said, I would like my son to know what it is to wake up on a Saturday morning with the sound of the taxis and the rush to buy <laughs> bread and milk. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not, I know that's not a, enough yeah. reason to buy a house, but I felt that the idea of waking up in an estate where birds, you only pick up because of the sound of the birds that is morning. Mm. It's totally wrong. Mm. You know, there's you something, your, you there's something priceless yeah. about a 10 year old in a township mm. and a 10 year old. I cannot send my son to a, to any store across the road, but a 10 year old in Soweto, they know where you can find the best fresh bread in mm -hmm. town, which store sells milk and not be cheaper, by cars. and they're not gonna be knocked down by cars. You don't have to tell them, don't speak to strangers. When they walk past an elderly, they say, Sawon. They say, hi. My son, I have to reprimand them for people who come into my house they to say, be. did you say hello? So what Bishop just said, the idea to gravitate to what suburban life, I think, is the reason why we've lost our moral campus. I wrote, I wrote Do small, you agree? I wrote a small little document about four, four or five weeks ago. Okay. Entitled, this so let me share with you, Bishop, one on men to men. Yes, please. It's entitled, Put Your Circles Around Your Triangles. And I was looking at the magnificent construction of African architecture, how we design our traditional houses, that triangle on top, and how we put, and how we put the, 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 the circle around the triangle, even the three stones yes. that we put uh, where we are cooking our food there. Okay. It's a triangle. Okay. And on top of it, there's a circle. It's a yes. triangle. And then yes. you go back to some Egyptian and learning and just tell you that the triangle is the strongest structure. Right. Now, when you come to a person yes, sir. who is both physically, physical, who is, who is, who is mental, mental, and spiritual. who is spiritual, that becomes like his triangle. All right. Now, the family must circle to protect this triangle. Okay. But when this triangle inside is safer, then the individual makes a family on an ideal situation. Where is the father, the mother, and the, and the, and, and, and the son yes. or the daughter? Yes. Then the community must put its circle around that triangle again. Okay. And so goes for the community, so goes for the government. Right. Now, when you have an infrastructure such as the government, yes. that does not understand the triangle yes, sir. of the community. Okay. And the community does not have respect for the triangle of the family, yeah, and the family does not develop an individual. Yeah, to in other words, basically, we needed to to have security systems, mm. legislature, legislative issues, academic yes. issues, okay, economical issues okay. that are all addressing the key fundamental connections of the human soul. Yeah, then from the individual who is well built, we could talk about a family that is stable. We could talk about a community that is stable. We could talk about a nation that is stable. Okay, ultimately, we can address Africa as a continent that is stable. But there's no way we can build a continent when we are destroying the people who are at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, Bishop. my. So if the epicenter is not aligned, the society is in disarray. Our, our policies of employment. We, now, we employ you. We don't care where your wife is and where your child is. You see it to finish. You spend six months working to destroy your family. Of all three elements you mentioned, I believe the most superior is the spiritual. Mm. How do we get back, Bishop, in recognizing or trying to recalibrate our epicenter spiritually. One of the things that uh, Karl Marx says, and of course he was errant when he said it, uh, but it's a point that we should look at, and that yeah. is religion is the opiate of the people. Okay. And oftentimes we have used the ethereal, the ontological, the mystical to decide how people ought to behave in an abstract environment. Spirituality is not something that stays contained. Spirituality is always released. But how is it released? Not in a church setting. God has removed the church from all of us. 
So what does your Christianity or your Islam, what does it look like now? The point is, if it's not community, it's nothing. But whose space am I to change? Whose space am I to operate in with my spirituality? Your children, they have something you didn't have. Correct. Growing up. Yes. You know what they, you know what they have that you didn't have? You. Ooh. Oh. Just. Everything that you are spiritually should be placed in those kids. Mm. And that spirituality that Damn. you place in those kids is Excuse not just me. going mm. to church. Man, that's a checkmate. It's being, being everything you are and more. I genuinely believe, Bishop, you have expanded your teachings and your knowledge to the world within the past two months far greater than you have before this pandemic based on your ability to pivot and adapt to the new way of distributing information. Mm. This lockdown has connected Bishop Noel Jones and Bishop Maponga mm. to minister to somebody in Ghana, to minister to somebody in Italy, mm. to minister to somebody in Spain. And I'm saying here, this conversation, mm. we might not see the fruits of what we are talking about, mm. but don't disregard the fact that the seeds have been laid. Don't undermine the days What do you beginnings. think, Bishop mm. Maponga, from mm. you, if this tree was to grow tomorrow, mm. what is this tree that we are planting? If you plant vegetables, you can yeah. never eat fruits. I'm not here for a quick fix. Okay. This is not a one-night stand. All right. This is a long-term relationship. Yes. We are turning the rudder of the African mindset. Okay. Towards self-development. And I, I like what the bishop said, again, that we should not take more time to try and command God on what he must do. Mm. Sorry, bishop. I like Trump for one thing only. Go ahead. Go ahead. Where he Go says... Ahead. America comes first. Yes. Now, if Africa could just take that statement, throw away the rest of Trump, put it in a trash can. But yes. we can't. We owe China 600 trillion. How do we start prioritizing ourselves? We, own Amer we owe America 20 trillion US dollars. How did we get into that? Space? How do we say I come first when the one who enabled you to eat is standing by your door knocking? Say, hey, that drumstick belongs to me. I afforded you to have that salmon. I have an, a beautiful one. Maybe the first one we, we do, under survival techniques. All right. Should the house be on fire, you don't want to start going looking for a cell phone when your wife and children are in the same fire. Mm. You prioritize so that you can deal with the mess after. A cell phone, you can buy another one. For crying out loud, it could even be insured. Mm. And there's no way America and China can give Africa 600 trillion and they did not insure that money. Tough luck. That's not business. <laughs> you prioritize. When you're buying debt, you buy insurance to cover the debt and etc. That's you can, true. You can write it off. Yes. And for crying out loud, they've stolen far much more from us yes. than what we owe. That 20 trillion is equivalent to the slaves that they took to America there. <laughs> Bishop, what tree are we planting? Let me hear from you. This conversation is going to spark the thought for that next person who will find the cure for cancer. I don't doubt that. But what does it do for the African Renaissance? What does it do for somebody right now who's saying, I am a prophet product of this dialogue. What we've got to do is plant this tree of self-love, self-respect mm. in that. the community that, that it has oh, been taken away tonight. from in order to control it. Mm. When you love yourself, it's some junk you don't take and some junk you don't think you deserve. But in order for that to happen, you have to build yourself to a place of personal respectability based on spiritual values. Amen. And when you have spiritual values, you will share. When you have spiritual values, you will get to a place where you don't keep rolling over other people for things that are going to pass away anyway. If what happened in Egypt went south instead of going west, Africa would be the philosophical center. Africa would be the financial center. Africa would be together. Yes, People sir. People would be together and understand each other. We would be world leaders and world conquerors. Can we redeem it? We would be all of that. And everybody now has to understand that Africa is still viable if Africans will understand their viability. I want to close with a nice one. Yes. Let every politician be buried where he dies. 
Why you got to decapitate me? That is true obliterating. That statement just, I don't know what to say after that. Bishop, did you hear that? <laughs> no. I'm saying let every politician be buried where he has died. We don't want coffins here. If you die oh, yes, there, yes. <laughs> they must bury you there. <laughs> well, he ought to be buried where his heart is, and his heart is where his treasure is. Thank Wherever you. he put that treasure, that's, that's where, where he ought to be buried. I want to thank a community of our friends online. I want to thank my sister, Katrina Kane. I want to thank my, my brother, Mosia. I want to thank everybody now. I, uh, Yvette Wilkins. I want to thank Natalia73. I want to thank Lux underscore of nature. God bless you. Everybody who's been part of this. Bishop, I want to thank you for what you're doing. You, on, you don't want to stand, man. The seeds that you've planted. God bless you, man. Heaven smile on everybody here. I'm telling you... If we could just love ourselves and yes. we would love our brothers and then when we walked into a white environment, it's not walking into worship, it's walking and looking straight in their face. And I'm not only talking about blackness, I'm talking about we as black men ought to raise the value of black women and women around the world, period. We need to get away from this weaker vessel conversation and understand that a vessel is just something that contains other things. We got to raise our women up because our women carry us. Our women, uh, we are the seed, but she carried us to the birth process. We got to raise our women up. Shout out we got to gotta raise them up. Hey, shout out to our sisters. Thank you, sisters, for listening. Thank you for being part of this dialogue. It's going to take us embracing our sisters and putting them in a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. Because they lead our households. Mm. What makes you think they'll fail in leading the economy, in leading other Maybe sectors? Maybe we should try them, actually. Maybe we should try it out, right? Bishop, how Ma about that? Men oh, go yeah. for war. Women look after children. Yeah. So maybe we must go back to community. Okay. Bishop Maponga, I want to thank you for the gift that you are to the African nation. I want to thank you for your contribution to this dialogue. Since we started the new normal, I approach life differently. And I pray with every cent I have, whatever I accumulate in life, I invest it in the awakening of the African child. Thank you. And God bless you for this dialogue.